I'm gonna do a Q&A for YouTube, whatever. Um, I post it on social media for people to ask me a couple questions. I ended up getting a lot of questions, so we're gonna jump right into it, and I'm gonna start answering these questions. So, let's start with Rob the Mob 10. Uh, he asked me on Instagram, how did you get started doing body work, family or? So I started doing body work because uh, of my family, yeah. Um, I, I started around like 10, 12 years old. Um, I liked cars ever since a kid. So I was always with my dad in the garage, building. he was building trucks, uh, lifting them and stuff like that. And then he would always take me to the shop so we could do, uh, so I could help him around at least, you know? He would always put me to do small stuff and I kind of liked it from there. But my, my dad's brother, my uncle, his godfather, my mom's side, they all do body work. I don't think they got too serious into the game though, where they uh, actually find it as a hobby because none of them actually Except my dad, he's a little more into the hobby side of it. But everybody else kind of just did it for a job. And I think this is where me and my brother are kind of like taking it to the next step. And hopefully my cousins that are doing it now uh, do the same thing. Uh, Cause I just want to get better at it. Which yeah, that's the first question. Next question is by German underscore 121. Would you ever sell your Lexus? I've been in the situation or the position uh, where I wanted to sell the Lexus for various reasons. I just felt like I wasn't gonna be able to do what I've always wanted with the car. But yeah, selling the Lexus, I would. I would one day. Um, I'm obviously not gonna get my money back for it or what I spent in it, so that's why I just stuck to keeping the car for myself and um, and building it, building it and doing as much as I can uh, to get it to the point where I've always wanted to be and using all my experience and knowledge that I learn every day on my car. If I were to sell it, if someone gave me the right, I would sell it. The next question is, uh, what color code is the paint? Paint code off the top of my head, but it's just a mid coat pearl. So it goes, it gets mixed into a binder, it's a turquoise, <clears throat> and it gets sprayed over a black base. Uh, basically a tri-stage color. Um, and it's very tricky. Blending this color is not the easiest thing. Getting it, getting it to match perfect is very hard. So I'm gonna be struggling a lot trying to get this color to match again when I come to paint my front end and blend my doors. Uh, this one's from my buddy Alex Samuels. He asks me, what not in JDM car would you see yourself building in an alternate universe? The uh, Corvette C6, like a 2005, 2006. Um, I think it's the ZR1, something like that. But yeah, those Corvettes, they always caught my eye and I always wanted to get one, slam it. <laughs> I would want to wide body it some more, give it some more arch, give it a crazy paint job and put some really aggressive wheels on it. I mean, everything else would be there already, like suspension and stock motor would be perfect. I wouldn't mess with that. That would be one of the cars. I think one of the only cars or a truck to modify, but that's pretty much it. Current wheels and wide body, is this car track capable or more for show? Um, I'd say more for show because I haven't really spent too much money or any money at all on suspension. I mean, all I got is basic uh, setups like coilovers, uh, camber, upper control arms. Uh, toe arms, sway bars, but I never really got too deep into um, like reinforcing everything with solid bushings or polyurethane bushings or, or making it track worthy because that's a shitload of money and I'm really not gonna take it to the track. And as far as this car's looks and uh, wheel setup wise, it wouldn't be good for the track. I would, uh, I would need to fix all the camber, I would need to do a lot of work to the body so I can make sure I don't mess anything up. But yeah, it's mostly show. That's why I'm paying attention to all these little details to make it look nice. And it drives nice. It drives really good. I mean, it handles perfect from when it was stock. We're gonna have to uh, get to some suspension work once I start laying down some rubber with this new motor and stuff. But um, it shouldn't be nothing major. I don't think I'm ever gonna take it to the track to do time attack or anything like that. Like. I'm mainly going to be doing, uh, uh, maybe I might hit a drift event here and there, but that's more, more or less what I'm leaning towards too, so. From my boy Ruben, uh, 
he asked me how did I get into cars. So like I said, as, ever since I was young, like around 10, 12, um, my dad was always uh, bringing me along the shop, garage, working on stuff around me. Um, I was helping him a lot. I got brought into the auto body shop and uh, collision scene very early. And I just kind of got hooked on it and started getting good at it. So um, Joshua underscore IS3 asked me, how much did it cost to white body your IS? Um, well, as far as labor wise, materials and stuff like that, that was all me. A rough estimate on how much I spent. I can't give you a cost exactly, but I bought front flares for $350. I got rear flares for $350. And then I did all the body work to mold them. So, I mean, if I were to do another car like this and leave it in primer, I'd charge them around like $2,000. Just because I kind of mastered it on this car already and I know what I'm doing and I'd be able to perfect it on somebody else's. This Zach underscore Smith 1973 asks, how do you feel about the IS300 wagons? I like them. I just never could find one here clean enough and cheap. Everybody wants to tax. Everybody wants to charge so much for these uh, wagons out here. And they're like super high mileage and kind of beat and rusty. Especially in the Midwest. But I love them. If I had the chance to buy one for cheap, I would modify it 100%. I would make it <laughs> a really badass show car. Porto Killer underscore BMX Andy. He said, are you going to fly to Miami and paint my RX-7? Yeah, man, I already told you. Buy me the ticket for a month, uh, give me the tools and a, and a place to spray, and you buy all material, man, I'll go do that ASAP. Let me know. My boy Omar Orozco, he said, what's your next car? So, in reality, I wouldn't want to buy another car. I wish I could, but I'm leaning more towards a truck. I want to buy a truck to haul my show car or I just want a truck. I've always wanted a truck, so hopefully this year goes great and I buy a truck. As far as a car, um, I really want to be able to get blessed with buying a Toyota Chaser, JZX100, and importing it. Um, that's one of my dream cars that I would, I would really want. I feel like if I got my hands on that, I'd be, I'd be going all out on that thing too. Denzel Drift Zell Riley asked me, which motor are you taking the 2JZ out for? The RB, K20, or the Barra? So, so I don't know if you've been watching or no, bro, but I kind of already pulled the 2J out and have a 1J in it. <laughs> and if it came down to me not having a 1J and having those three motors in front of me, the RB I wouldn't put in because it, the N Nissan, RB, I mean, I just heard bad shit about them that they suck to work on. They're kind of really uh, meticulous. Um, the K20, I would never put a Honda engine, especially a four-cylinder in my Lexus. And the Barra is a fucking Ford, so I don't, I mean, even though it's one of the best, what is it, an inline six or four cylinder engine? Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't put a Ford engine in Lexus. I try to keep I tried keeping it OG uh <laughs> same family heart transplant type of deal. And I mean I just heard a lot of great things about Wonders and they fit right in along with a bunch of other stuff that just kinda like plugs and plays with it. There's really little to none uh modifications as far as making the engine fit. <laughs> Steven Mama Hawa said, who's the guy with the blue IS? You should do more collabs. Yeah, if you didn't live so fucking far, like an hour and a half away, man, you should stop by whenever you want. From Anthony Esparza, he said, what advice would you give to your 16 slash 17 year old self? Um, when I was 16, 17, I remember that I wanted everything I have now um, and I got it um, and you know, if I were to go back to that time, I'd tell myself to just be patient, keep doing what you're doing, keep grinding. Uh, don't focus on anybody else's opinion, you do you, and, and get to the point where you wanna get, because if you let people's opinions get in the way of what you wanna do, that's when everything falls apart. So, yeah, I'd say just you do you, don't worry about nobody else. But would you, uh, Colin Dernolk, however you say that, I'm sorry I butchered that, but, 
He said, would you consider a Turbo K24 swap? No, I don't want Honda engine in my car. Um, I bet they're really good motors. I just wouldn't want to do that. That'd be kind of weird. I'm sure they're making a really crazy one out there. So we'll see what happens later on in the future. That'll probably be the next 1J swap for the IS300s. <laughs> Everybody's gonna be slapping K-Series engines in their shit. <laughs> Jesse Applegate said, why do you change your car color and appearance so much? Well, to be honest, I've only done it twice. Um, and that's only because I am a body tech and I do this for a living. So every day that I learn something or I see uh, something I like, I always try to incorporate it into my car, man. I mean, it's my car, you know, it literally costs me nothing but time to do this stuff. And it just, it's really just practice on my own car. The skill set that I'm learning out, out on the field and I'm able to put it in my car is really nice and I mean beneficial because it, it looks crazy and it looks badass at the end of the day. But um, that's just me, man. That's just because I got the opportunity and I got the chance and I'm, I'm out here doing it. And if I could do it, I'm gonna do it. I mean, you know, so. Worst part about painting cars for a living from Toyota Junkie 9000. Um, I would say, <laughs> I would say color matching, uh, as far as panel painting, when you match stuff, it's super hard to match plastic to metals, uh, especially when they don't give you time to blend on work orders or estimates, or they don't put blend time at all, and you try to get it as close as you can, that always sucks. Uh, blending super hard colors on Chrysler's, they have some really bad colors. <laughs> GM has some bad pearl whites, they're always a pain. Um, mostly it'll just be color matching, I think, because if you kind of got the laying down and cleanliness down of uh, masking and, and spraying and clear coating, everything else is fine. You just got to worry about them colors, man. My buddy out there in Florida too, Turbo Django, he said, did you record the 1J install? I need to know how much work is involved. No, I actually didn't uh, record that. I was, um, hopping it is pretty much the same thing as putting your stock motor in it. All the mounts are the same, it just sits exactly where it does with the 2J. You just gotta make sure it's a front sump uh, oil pan so it clears the subframe. And you'll be all right, it's really easy. I mean, I pulled that thing out like three times myself. Joshua, it's underscore Joshua17 asks, how do you prep a steel body panel that comes with black primer? If it's a brand new part, aftermarket or OEM, you hit it with six. 600 grit, sand it really good, make it dull, and then go over with a scuff pad, with the red Scott Sprite scuff pad, get all your edges good, clean it real good, wipe it down, decrease it, ready for paint. This is the last one, Diego Vault. In the process of creating my YouTube channel as well, any pointers? Yeah, man, I mean, I was struggling uh, trying to get my own content going because I was always insecure about me doing my stuff. Um, one thing that you gotta really, really take serious is just putting content you want out there. Just do you, put it out there, don't worry about anybody else's, you focus on your, on your, on your content and make it as best as you can and put it out there. People are gonna watch your videos because of you. They're not gonna watch it because of what you do. If, if they're interested in what you do, that's a plus. But, I mean, I get people that watch my stuff and it's not even a lot of people, but I feel like it's just because they're interested in what I do. Uh, the, the subscribers and people that watch and the views will come naturally after that. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for this q and I'm gonna have uh, a couple uh, clothing companies that are gonna work with me so I can promote them advertise them and I'm gonna be giving you guys links for shirts and stuff like that and some new merch for other pe other companies so I can help promote them and give some uh, attention to the channel and that way you guys get some cool merch uh, I get more creative with my uh, videos and it's a win-win so that's it for this q and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'm gonna do I'm gonna start doing podcasts with one of my buddies very soon. So if you guys are really interested in that, give us some ideas on what we should talk about. But it's gonna be mainly car-based content for the podcast. So let us know what you think about that. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video.